So what have we got for you today? Well, the mirror has splashed not on today's strikes, which we'll get to in a bit, but allegations about the Deputy Prime Minister, Dominic Raab, who, as you may know, is being investigated uh, about bullying his staff, reportedly. Now, these allegations seem to have turned into 24 people making complaints about his behaviour. And here we have former co-workers who are basically accusing him um, of how can we put it, of, of of basically being like domestic abuse in the workplace, Ash, fundamentally, saying that mm. it's like being in an abusive relationship, having him as their boss. Can you take us through it? What's being said? Yes, yeah, so this is a story from our political editor, John, who said that witnesses who spoke to him suggested that civil servants suffered breakdowns and that sometimes felt suicidal. Um, they suggested it was a controlling, abusing relationship. Witnesses said he would belittle and demean staff. I think one source told John as well, he changes his behaviour depending on whether you're a civil servant he has control over or another government minister. I mean, of course, Rob spokesman has declined to comment, pointing to the independent inquiry that's going on at the moment. Um, but he's previously said that he has behaved professionally at all times and that the government takes a zero tolerance approach to bullying. I mean, in total, he's facing eight complaints of bullying across the civil service involving at least 24 staff that we are aware of. Um, the Liberal Democrats and the FDA union, which represents senior civil servants, are both calling for him to be suspended while the inquiry is carried out. I mean, the issue is we just don't know how long this inquiry is going to last at the moment. I mean, it's uh, the inquiry into the Museum Zahawi only lasted six days, but this has been going on. So, well, it was first announced in November when the allegations first came to light. Now, at the time, of course, the Prime Minister didn't have an ethics advisor because the one Boris Johnson previously had resigned. Um, so he appointed Adam Tolley QC, um, who's an investigating this case and we don't know if he's paying a day-to-day -day rate or what what's going on there um but he is going through the allegations methodically speaking to senior civil servants i think there are reports today that at least two permanent secretaries have been spoken to about the witnesses reports um and we'll have to wait and see the conclusions of that report mm -hmm. it's all going to be yes yes well done i'm sure he's saying please and thank you to a lot of people at the moment I mean, I would be if I was facing 24 allegations of being a bit snippy, although it is a bit more than snippy. Uh, people are left being suicidal, talking about breakdowns, mm -hmm. talking about abuse almost in the workplace, uh, that he was coming up really with um, with rules and, and regulations for them to follow and comply with, which then changed and stopped and changed his mind and they didn't didn't work. And, you know, to say you must do this and then suddenly you don't, it's, it is... Um, probably a bit triggering for some people who have had experience of domestic abuse. Yeah. But there's this other highly damaging bit for Rishi Sunak, which has emerged this morning, which is that apparently uh, number 10 was alerted to some of these allegations before he appointed Rob as his deputy. Um, now, Rob backed Sunak in the leadership campaign. He clearly felt he needed him on his team. And so he seems to have overlooked it all. But Ash, what struck me is that Number 10 is saying he wasn't personally told about the allegations, but there was an alert raised somehow with somebody somewhere in some form about mm. his concerns, although at the time they weren't formal complaints. But the thing is, isn't it, that as soon as someone makes a raises vague concerns, and let's say, for example, about Nadim Zahawi's tax affairs, like six years ago, as soon as you put that person in a position of power or influence, some of those concerns are highly likely to become very concrete allegations pretty quickly. I mean, that's just a case of having some political nous and, and seeing which way the wind's going to blow on that one. Why didn't Rishi, having heard that there were some concerns, why didn't he think, mm, best not, best make him a junior minister, best move him to the side, best make him party chairman, best do something else with him mm. rather than making him my deputy? I think it's important to remember that Dominic Raab um, was one of Rishi Sunak's first backers in the leadership race in the mm. summer. They are, they're quite a close, unlike Nadim Zahawi, they have quite a close, a close political affinity. Um, he stood with by him during Liz Truss's premiership and was one of his first backers when Liz Truss's government imploded. Um, whereas Nadim Zahawi sort of backed Liz Truss all the way through the summer. And then as soon as Liz Truss's government fell, he then backed Boris Johnson and op-ed for The Telegraph just made For an evening. <laughs> <laughs> even when Boris Johnson was pulling out the race. So, I mean, Dominic Raab and Rishi Sunak are a lot closer in political terms. And I think standing on the steps of Downing Street on his first day in office, the Rishi Sunak promised integrity in government after years of Boris Johnson. And 
he, I think he's aware that if he's forced to sack Dominic Raab, it would be extremely damaging for his government. But I also, I also think it's worth pointing out the sort of bravery of the civil servants coming forward because I don't know if you remember two years ago when Priti Patel, the then Home Secretary, was, yeah. um, she was subject to bullying allegations at the Home Office too. And then the then Prime Minister Boris Johnson ordered a bullying inquiry by his independent advisor, who reported back that um, she had broken the ministerial code. What happened then? Boris Johnson overruled his advisor. He messaged Tory MPs on a WhatsApp group saying stand square behind the Pritster. So it's it's amazing that these civil servants actually feel they can come forward and put these allegations forward against some of the most powerful people in the country. And Boris Johnson completely undermined the system at the time. Exactly. The precedent for this actually being fixed is pretty grim. You've got to have some trust, I suppose, in Sunak to do the right thing. Perhaps that's why they're coming forward. Now, get into the comments. Ask us your questions. Uh, these are just allegations about Raab at the moment. But do you think that while they're being investigated, he should still be Deputy Prime Minister? Do you think he should still be um, the Justice Secretary in charge of the government department that's you know, literally um, supposed to be sorting out the prosecutions for controlling and coercive behaviour throughout the country. Um, Now, Denise says, if he's bullying, he should go. But on the other hand, people today are too soft. Snowflakes come to mind. Stand up for yourself and answer back. Put your health first, not your job. Life's too short to be unhappy in your job. Move on. Denise, I feel you and I see from your picture we're probably roughly of an age. And I had a long chat yesterday with some of my journalism students who are 20 years younger than me. And I had exactly this conversation. I said, when I was your age, you know, you put up with stuff and you, um, you, you soak up stuff that perhaps you shouldn't do. And that you should say, no, this isn't OK and I'm going to be tougher about things. But we have the luxury of being ladies in our middle years who are, you know, perhaps you've had your children. Perhaps you've just decided you no longer give a chance, a bit like me. And you've decided that you can go out and be a bit tougher about stuff. But when you're 20 something, when you're Ashley's age, perhaps, when you're starting out in your career, it's really difficult, isn't it, Ash, to, to take someone who is your boss and to stand up to them. I mean, there's ways of doing it, but it's not just a case of being a snowflake. It's a case of being more junior. Often, isn't it? It's the power dynamic that stops people speaking out, not being a snowflake. Yeah, completely. I mean, I just don't really think this argument of snowflakes is even relevant, to be honest. I mean, these civil servants are complaining about breakdowns and feeling suicidal. I think the civil service should take these extremely seriously. And I mean, these people work for years to get into these roles. They sacrifice quite a lot. And the civil service is taking them seriously. And um, I think we'll see how that goes. But I don't think it's appropriate to be calling people snowflakes who are bringing forward allegations of bullying in the workplace. No. And until we know the detail of those allegations, we don't know if, you know, he merely asked them to tidy up their paper clips or if he was genuinely riding them just far too hard in the office. We don't know. But we I'm sure if there's 24, there are going to be some fairly serious ones in there. Now, Mike says uh, Johnson made the raising of official complaints by officials impossible with his Patel let off. Such complaints would most likely backfire on the person making the complaint. And now Sunak says he wasn't directly told. It's Johnson level deflection. I mean, Mike's just sort of answers our last point there a bit um which is that people didn't feel they could be believed in the last couple of years and so therefore they probably swallowed more stuff than they might otherwise have done but then you've got this fact that he's almost like boris johnson going well no one told me about it or they didn't say it was written down complaint it wasn't formal so there's nothing i could do about it which is a bit that's actually it's not quite deflection i disagree with mike there i think that's more like how Sunak handled the Nadim Zahawi allegations, more in a way of being, well, this is the professional way we do things in the HR department. We need to go through due process, you know, and tick this particular box on the spreadsheet. Uh, and he's he's doing something similar here, which is that if the complaint isn't formal, there's really nothing I can do about it. Otherwise, they'll, you know, they could sue us for unfair dismissal or something, which doesn't work with government ministers, of course. Yeah, I think a columnist made a good point the other day. Is he's, he's acting sort of like a sort of consultant management um, boss of the firm, bringing in sort of moral auditors to his government to investigate. Um, I think it's. I think Jake Berry, the former Tory chairman under Liz Trust, made a good point on Question Time last week. He was suggesting that once ministers are subject to these sort of um, really serious allegations, they should be put on suspension. Um, a sort of a mechanism should be in place so they can be investigated um, while not serving in the post. And if they are cleared by the investigation, they can come back to their role. 
which I think is important because in most workplaces across the country, if you were subject to these sort of allegations, I don't think you'd be sharing an office with your your colleagues the next day. No, you'd be on gardening leave, wouldn't you? It'd be but okay. go and be somewhere else for a bit. Work from home. Just mm-hmm. and there'd there'd be a lot of people obviously supervising you quite closely. Yeah. I would have thought. And I see it, it's also important to point out today that is uh, Rishi Sunak's hundred days as Tory leader. Um, so it's all oh, hundred days since the days of Liz Trust now. Um, and in that time, you've had Gavin Williamson, who's another close a close political colleague of. Rishi Sunak, he was forced to resign over bullying allegations in the first few weeks of Rishi Sunak's premiership. Um, he's appointed Suella Braveman as Home Secretary days after she resigned during, from Liz Truss's government over breaking the ministerial code. Um, he's had to force Nadim Zahawi to quit as party chair over the row of his tax affairs. And now his deputy prime minister is subject to eight allegations of bullying from 24 members of staff. So it's not a great record after 100 days in office. No, you'd think I can remember. I can still vaguely remember what Tony Blair wanted to achieve in his first hundred days in office, and I want to tick off this and this and this and this, and I'll do that. And you really want the first hundred days to go pretty smoothly and look good. Mm. A bit difficult, of course, when you take over a ship that's um, already hit the iceberg. Now, um, before we move on to another story, um, as you said earlier on, Sunak didn't have any choice but to order this inquiry when they were first made, these allegations, when we thought there was just eight of them, because he didn't have an ethics advisor. He gave it to a QC. It's going to take months to get to the bottom of it and interview everybody concerned and all the rest of it. And despite the fact that Rob has said he will rebut and refute all these allegations thoroughly, he can't comment. (laughs) And uh, he's not commenting until everything is over. So, we've got this situation where we've just had Sunak make himself look really weak by waiting six days to sack Nadim Zahawi. Can he really afford in his situation? I mean, someone's just sent me a tweet of him, you know, Rishi Sunak earlier, and it's a plate of wobbly jelly. Can he really afford to wait any longer to get rid of someone when there are these sort of headlines coming out about him? Can he afford to have months, weeks maybe, months of these headlines about how awful Rob is to work for when he's in charge of, and I'm going to say it again, prosecuting actual, um, uh, you know, perpetrators of controlling and coercive behaviour. It's a very good point. I mean, I, I do think he is going to, for the time being, he is going to stand by Dominic Rob just because of how close they are. But I think the uh, the point about jelly on a plate was made by Keir Starmer at Prime Minister's Questions before Christmas. And I think it's quite an effective point. And I'm sure we'll probably hear the same words from Keir Starmer at the dispatch box facing Rishi Sunak today, who will never to be stonewall questions about the investigation um, while the process is ongoing. Um, but I do think the longer it lingers on, the more damaging it gets for Rishi Sunak because he is this, this sort of um, description of him being weak is starting to catch on. And we're even getting, um, I think it was Michael Portillo at the weekend, the former Tory cabinet minister, suggesting that waiting so long to sedac- sack Nadeem Sahawi showed the prime minister to be weak. And it's not just Labour that are saying this. And the more that catches on, the more this investigation lingers, I think the more damaging it becomes to the prime minister. But then at the same time, and the political um, challenges with that is if he does have, he is forced to sack the deputy prime minister. I mean, the political repercussions of that are massive too. Exactly. Uh, I think if you had Spit Image on mainstream telly now, as opposed to just on Britbox, they may well have a Rishi Sunak puppet that just melts every five minutes. What a melt! Um, so we'll have to see how that all pans out, of course, but it's not looking good for Sunak or Raab. Now, um, we do need to move on to another story. So uh, get into the comments and questions. Have you had problems with the boss at work? What happened? Did, did you get your justice or did they have their justice? Have you been the victim of complaints that just weren't justified by snowflakes? Do let us know. <laughs> 